99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, Lagos, uh, the man is back. He's here after his uh, one weekend sabbatical. I wouldn't call it that. Good morning to you, uh, Mr. Jimmy Lissou. Good to see you. How, how are you? How's it Very going? well, thank you. And you? Hang it in there. All right, had a good weekend? Yeah. All right, fantastic. Very restful. Fantastic, great. All right, so we're back to look at the papers, of course, analysis of the big stories and the important stories um, uh, with uh, Mr. Jimmy Lewis himself. Right on daily uh, today, part two. My name is Kofi Bartels, and we're streaming live on Facebook. You can head to our Facebook page, um, facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM, or search for Nigeria Space Info Space 99.3, and you can watch live from wherever you are. Drop a comment on Facebook. Also on YouTube, we are streaming live. Just search for Nigeria Info FM. FM is a verified YouTube account and you can subscribe to it and also you can comment uh, on live stream right there on Facebook. Let's quickly start with um, a look at the story in The Punch. Uh, Binance chief FG contacts Interpol. Soldiers held over detainees escape. So I heard the government said they are shocked at the man's escape. This should be a shame to say that I've been shocked. <laughs> I mean, this, 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 is, this is unbelievable. Um, it is said I'm choosing my words now that it is. it has been said, we've been told that oh, because of the Ramadan, the man wanted to go and say his prayers. Um, how a man in detention would not be told to say his prayers where everybody could see him, I don't know. Anyway, there's no doubt that there, is, there was it's one big conspiracy and most likely, very, very likely, a lot of money has changed hands. I have some questions to ask the security um the security officers, did he leave on a commercial flight or did he leave on um, on a private jet? I think he left, he left with Kenya Airways. So the question is this. Did he go through the protocols of the DSS and the immigration? Because usually when you go through the airport, you, you first of all go through DSS screening and then you go to, through immigration. Now, the DSS man takes your passport and he, he fumbles around with the computer. Uh, um, was the DSS man on duty on that day compromised? Because his name should have been on that list. It should have been automated. That's the whole essence of having a DSS officer there. Though, if you ask me, what happens in other countries is everything is centralized. So even in Ghana now, it's centralized because you put your passport, if there's any any reason maybe from the dss or from the police or from the immigration and your co your passport has been you know ha you know has been flagged that door will not open and then of course so he would have gone through that um, how come the dss man didn't check you know the second issue then is that which of his passports did he come into nigeria with he has dual citizenship. He has Kenyan citizenship and he has UK citizenship. Which passport did he come with into Nigeria? Okay, because if he presents one passport, I would have thought that it is that passport that the authorities would have seized. Do you understand? Mm. Because in coming into your country, if he comes, if he presented his Kenyan passport, he's a Kenyan. And therefore, if you detain him, his passport should have been taken from him for a nice, polite word called safekeeping. So was his, the passport he came in with, was it taken from him? So if that passport was taken from him, because that was the passport that was stamped. It was his British passport that was taken that from him. That taken from him, that he no, came in for with. For safekeeping, like you For said. safekeeping. So how did he then go with a Kenyan passport that did not indicate that he had come into Nigeria. They said it was smuggled. That's so. Uh, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So, a lot of money has changed, and there's there's been a lot of compromise, and and it just shows um, the so-called security nets that we have, uh, uh, you know, around us that can easily be compromised. Hmm. Easily be. Remember that this gentleman being detained is a man of great interest to this country great interest. He's being suspected of so many things 
that is probably one of the reasons why you and I are scrounging for food. I said one, not the main reason, scrounging for food. So we've been careless. We've been completely embarrassed. It wasn't as if he didn't jump a wall. Mm. He, did, he just walked away. Okay, so this story says that uh, the personnel responsible for the custody of the suspect have been arrested. And a thorough investigation is going on to unravel the circumstances. This, the result of this, I would be more than interested to know how he was able to put all this in, 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 into action because otherwise we are not safe. If our security can be compromised for a man to exit the country, then it means that the security can also be compromised for a man or men to enter the country. You want to say something? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just laughing. Oh, okay, yes, <laughs> sir, sir. You, you mm. travel, you travel quite often. Yeah, I'm sure. Your experience at the airport is always the same. I gotta find out something. Yeah, yeah of course. That's that's where. I'm. No, not just that. Not just that. It's not even find out something. There is no time. There is no time in all the travels that I've done till date that you do not see signs of protocol compromise in the airport. You find people who shouldn't be in certain areas. You find people touts who come and meet expatriates or some high net worth Nigerians who don't believe in going through a very simple process. You see the signs, they're visible there every blessed day. Just looking forward to it. You see people, you see, you see some in army uniform, some, some in, 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 in you know, with uh, some Kaki, funny ID card, ID or card whatever card. it is. Yeah. Yes. It is seen every day. And this is a wake up call to the national security advisor. He must make sure that he plants people there that don't compromise security, no matter how highly placed. What is it with us that. Do you know, Kofi, that Nigerians always take pride in, 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 in breaking the law? The, the, for example, when you're traveling, it says passengers only. Then you find somebody, you find somebody, ah, how are you? Where are you going? Oh, no, I just came to escort my, my, my wife. She's traveling. He follows her to the gate. How did that happen? Hmm. The, the, the joy of traveling with highly placed people is that when you get to your destination, everybody go be in papa name. Even the president cannot compromise the security in American airports. The law is the law. But but here VIP. A VIP. And we do it visibly. A, a big man is traveling, he, his PA must follow carry his bag till he's about to board the plane. And that PA may be a police uh, officer. No, no. If the PA is not a police officer. The PA has a policeman with him. Hmm. All that kind of nonsense. And this is what has led to this kind of embarrassing situation. Okay? He was under a court remand. Okay? And he was scheduled to appear again on the 4th of April. He's gone. It's not likely you're going to see him for a while. He's gone. Uh, because the compromise is going to go all through. Some people will be making it out. Don't worry. They will soon get out of talking about him. He's gone and he's gone. Hmm. Could it also be could it also be that some extremely highly placed one or two Nigerians within the government, could they be complicit in all this? Your mind, if, you, if you've read so many James Bond movies, could also tell you that, could the government have quietly opened the door for him to go? Let's move on to the next story. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, so many questions, sir. We have uh, some more stories here. This time we go to, um, let's see, the Punch editorial. Uh, FG states, local governments, where has all the money gone? This is a very emotional headline. Mm -hmm. And it is striking and direct. And the editorial is written by the Punch. And it just asks one basic question. Where is the money? All the money that has, that federal government has allocated to itself, all the money that states have been allocated and local government, where is the money? Okay, it gives a breakdown of what some states have gotten and how since uh, President Inubu came on board, it has been on the increase. Yet, the lives of the people have been worse. Hmm. I told you of last week how we got in my 
24 house estate, how we got a, a letter from the CDA, what do they call it, CAD, hmm. that, oh, we've been allocated, um, the CDA, that the CDA has been allocated, I can't even remember what it's 70 uh, slots for stop, whatever it was. You know that kind of nonsense that goes on. Where is the money? Uh, uh, it, it talks. It says in in its uh, quarterly review recently, the executive secretary of NEITI says that a further analysis of 10.114 trillion disbursements in 2023 show an increase of 1.9 trillion when compared to disbursement of 8.2 of 2022. Delta and Rivers received the highest revenues due to their oil and gas earnings. Nasarawa received the least at 73.32 billion. Despite the surge in revenues, life is getting more difficult for citizens, with more than 140 million citizens living in political, living in multidimensional poverty. Although Tinubu assured Nigerians that the process of the petrol subsidy would be deployed in improving the well-being of citizens, it seems it is only the political class that is reaping the benefits of the policy. Only piecemeal humanitarian actions, like sharing of rice and grains and the epileptic, epileptic conditional cash transfer have so far sufficed. Unfortunately, this is the key part that I always emphasize and I want you to listen to this. This is the Punch editorial. Punch is one of Nigeria's leading newspapers, well respected. It says, unfortunately, Nigerian leaders are cocooned in opulence, mm. feigning ignorance of the harsh realities of the citizens, a trip down to the social media would. You, you will see. You see what we are talking about here. In October, the National Assembly earmarked 57.6 billion to purchase SUV for members. Mm. A party justified this by claiming that ministers drove four official cars and they need to negotiate bad roads. Kebi Governor Nasir Idris had distributed 24 SUVs to state lawmakers and 28 SUVs. To commissioners by early March. That's in Kebi. Okay. In December, former Kogi governor Yaya Bello purchased 40 SUVs and four Hilux vans for lawmakers and judges. I told you that judges are also now hmm. part of the favored ones. The rest of us, doctors, uh, teachers, especially, and so on and so forth, have all been bound to the Philistines. So, the point argues against this. Meanwhile, Nigerians are under the siege of violence seen in terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, killings, and arson. Abuja-based Beacon Consulting says that no fewer than 5,060 Nigerians died in violence in President Tinubu's first seven months in office. They also talk about the electricity situation and say Nigerians who are low in gross darkness as states have failed to invest in the sector to boost electricity in their domain. So at the end of the day, the question is this, that we should ask all our politicians, you should ask your honorables, you should ask your, even your councillors, your chairman, every time you see them, where is our money? It's a pity our, 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 our mm. civil, uh, you know, we don't have an active civil, uh, 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 civil, we don't have active civil activists. Mm. But now we should have in t people wearing t-shirts and everybody just say, where is our money? We need to create some awareness. Sir. We don't, sorry, one second. Yeah. We don't just sit down, listen to analysis, listen to this and listen to that and do nothing mm. and continue to suffer and turn ourselves into beggars. Who should bring stickers and whatever? I'm not asking, you know, non-violent and whatever. Asking simple questions. Where is our money? Oh, Wada. So that's what that's yeah. what that's what the point is saying here. Hmm. Federal government, states, local governments. They are not saying where is our money. They say where has all the money gone? Because they believe that it is gone. Got somewhere. It's not as if somebody <laughs> is saving it <laughs> for us. Yes. <laughs> you wanted so to say something? Have you seen the latest DMO figures on? the domestic debt of states in the country. Hmm. I don't read such things anymore. Mm -hmm. As well. if, if some of us had a true picture of where we are, hmm? if we had a true picture, if we stopped going to church one Sunday and they said just sat back to 
quietly drink a cup of tea and think about where this country is, I think the suicide rate would have gone up. God forbid. It's so yes. sad. It's so sad. Yes. It's so sad. Really sad. That they're not just taking, uh, Uncle Jimmy, the, mm. the, the allocations. They are also going ahead to borrow to yeah. spend. I said, as Sheriff, he will tell you, I said, if a politician needs... Ex- they are from a different species, politicians, most of them. If a politician needs X amount to, at the very least, celebrate his 70th birthday, let's say he's a local government chairman, and he needs... He's beg, but he won't borrow. He will beg and steal. Not all, both. He will borrow because he, he will get his local government to go and raise some money somewhere for some project. Then he will work it. That is the kind of thinking that 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 that, that goes on. But let's go on. Don't let me waste too much time on that. All right, there we go to the Vanguard. Uh, moving on from the Punch Editorial, NGE expresses concern over growing insecurity. The writer to that writers urges military to speak out on abduction of editor. Uh, advises media against uh, inadvertently giving stimulus to terrorists. Comments Governor Mbaz's revolutionary projects in Enugu, that's Nigeria Guild of Editors, I believe. Yes, Nigeria Guild of Editors are expressing, I think they had, uh, um, I think they had their annual whatever it is, and they're expressing concern. But I, I also am a bit worried about our profession. Um, the pollution that has hit the, the profession of journalism is more than the pollution that has in the Niger Delta. In the sense that every other person now claims to be a journalist. That's a very dangerous. And you can see the carelessness with which these things are being done. You know, people think it's easy. The practice of journalism is extremely difficult. And whether you like it or not, you have to be trained somewhat to handle that responsibility of disseminating information. I've seen people in the social media describe themselves as bloggers and this and say all kinds of nonsense and, and, and cause so much confusion in the land. I think the NG also needs to, and the NUJ, need to be concerned about that. I mean, for as long as I cannot put on a wig and gown to go and practice in court or walk around with a stethoscope and a needle in my hand, the practice of journalism is just that important. It is extremely important. One wrong sentence and you can run the whole country down. And that bothers me. So they now talk about some editor who was um, who has recently been picked up, supposedly by the military. Now that also, you know, it bothers me. I don't know the gentleman, to be, to be honest with you, but why would, shouldn't the military be reporting him to the police and the police would do the needful? That is, if it is true, that is the mm. military that picked him up. For all you know, he could have been kidnapped. For all you know. But I see a lot of things. I see people running blogs, running, doing programs and so on and so forth, claiming to be journalists. And they are constituting a whole lot of damage. There's a recent one I don't want to mention because it's quite sensitive. But the recent case, but there's been carelessness in that issue on both sides. On both sides. You see, apart from balance... There is also the use of language. There is something called, in, you know, all these things. People don't know. They think that journalism and democracy is a free for all and free for all. No. That's why for those who say that um, they don't want the social media, control, it must be controlled. But people must not be gagged. That they're two different things entirely. So many lives have been wrecked. So many lives have been wrecked by just making one careless statement. Uh, 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 you, you know, in the social media, in the name of journalism, and then we run into a crisis. So I think that is also that should also be of great concern to the uh, Nigerian Guild of Editors. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad they made quite some nice uh, suggestions to the uh, uh, to, that I hope the governor, government, sorry, would, would take it in, in, in good faith. And they also commend Governor Mba, his revolutionary progress in Enugu. But I'm wondering why they left out the other gentleman. Is it from... Oti. Uh, eh? Oti. Oti, yes. Oti, Oti. Yes. Yeah, in fact, what we're doing at 9 o'clock, somebody went on a two, three-day visit to his state and is going to give us her impression of what she met on ground. Okay. Because right. once, you see, for me, once I recognize or we recognize somebody who is, who is doing the minimum expected, 
giving to today's Nigeria, you need to give them that push before they fall back. Imagine uh, the irony. I read somewhere that the man had to apologize for a good performance that he didn't mean to embarrass his colleagues in this region. Was he not playing to the gallery? I mean, what is it mean? <laughs> Whatever it is. But, but it means that some people could have complained. You know Nigerians now. Maybe some of his people say, now, nah, what do you they do now? You know I cannot do this thing and you are doing it. You are embarrassing me. Mm. I, 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 that, that's not far from reality. Yes. You know, some of these have been for, Look at, A man, Soludo is a professor. Is he not? Mm -hmm. I read somewhere which he has not denied that he publicly said, oh, he did not develop a particular area because the honorable from that area, the, the, the people there did not vote for him. He said, he, 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 he claimed that he said it. A professor. Yeah. Nothing we never well, see. <laughs> yes, I, I heard some time that a, a, one of the governors of Arabia State yes. was were trying to develop somewhere. You know, they have a lot of bad roads in Arabia State. Yes. And they, they told him, no, he should not Fix that request to make the previous governor look bad. Look bad. <laughs> so maybe. You know, you know, you know the, the 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 to be honest with you, the the the, the mental capacity of some of our leaders, in spite of all the degrees that they display, it needs to be checked. That a former central bank governor and a professor would make that kind of statement in public. Okay, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I hope he's not a professor of Guinea. <laughs> 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 Let, let's take a quick commercial and then we'll come and continue. Later. All right, no problem. Is your heart racing because your MTN line is blocked? You can't make calls? You can't receive calls? Not even text messages? Nothing at all? What about bank alerts? <laughs> all these happened because you haven't linked your NIN to your MTN line. Unblock your MTN line today by linking it to your NIN. Rush to any nearby MTN store or agent. If you don't have your NIN yet, no problem. Simply go to any nearby NIMC office to get your NIN. MTN, what are we doing today? You're there among the people with their heart, they do bing bing because their MTN line not connect again. You know if it make call, you know if it receive call. Even SMS, like, like, you know, fit to receive shishi. Bank alert, unko. <laughs> All these things, they happen to you because you don't link your NIN to your MTN line. But if it unblock your MTN line today, if you link them to your NIN, just here is go any MTN store or agent way near you. But if you no come get your NIN, unko, nothing spoil. Just rush, go get them for any NIMC office way near you to collect your NIN. MTN. What do we they do today? Dailies today. Dailies today. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, welcome back. We're still looking at the headlines uh, and analysis with Mr. Jimmy Dissou from today's National Daily. So the next one is the Vanguard uh, General Olari Wajigoft, or Dua Group. I think it's something about uh, Tantita and Tompolo. Yes, um, I just wanted to make a very quick comment that these are interested groups, okay? I think I think I don't think that it is appropriate. I support General Olawaju. It's not appropriate for you to be, you, you know, marshalling out jobs for security people, uh, for the security um, forces, to private individuals. This undue familiarity, uh, and, and like um, one one military officer said, that you allow the man like uh, uh, Sadi Dokubo to come to the seat of power with the coat of arms over, uh, over his head and indicting the military. They are not competitors. They are not. We need to be very careful. So, for th this, uh, 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 this Odua group, I think they also they are trying to see if they can get their own contract. You know, they, mm. to put it bluntly, to put it bluntly, a lot of what we do, what we are doing is called high-level racketeering that, that's what it is you can increase your you can increase your presence you can increase your military presence you can form paramilitary groups from the groups say take 10 from the navy 10 from the army take what and what and form a group and get the job done but this idea of farming out security to to civilian 46 billion now. yes forget the amount mm. kofi Forget the amount. The consequences is part of what we're seeing that happened in Delta State. The general is right. 
I don't know. They have their own politics going on here because they keep referring to the. You know, one thing about Nigerians is once they want to put their argument on, they talk about the shoe you are wearing, how you only wear red shirt and red pants and vest and all kinds of trivialities. The bottom line is, you shouldn't be given this job. This job given to Tantita or whatever their name is. These things are. They, you should have. You should have a, 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 a military force. Owned and run by the government, trained by government, properly trained Uncle Jimmy, can under I ask, a structure. Yes. Can I ask you? In America um, farmed out um, a military contract to a company called Blackwater in Iraq. That is, did they do it in their own country? No, no, no. Um, for when the Americans went out to fight a war, that's a, that's a mess. They hired mercenaries. We are talking of to run to secure your own country. I think Blackwater, they do stuff like that in America. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never seen any Blackwater. All, I mean, hey, I was in America this year. I didn't see anything. <laughs> and so, you know. It, it's, and, and then I also don't want, like this idea that you brought up, that because America has done something, it makes it right. There's a thousand things that Americans do that are, that are very unpleasing to the eyes and to the ears. So don't let's go along that road. What we are saying is, given our own peculiarities, you need that strength of power to hold, to hold the country together. Look at the familiarity. See what it has done. See what it has done. Because, you see, if you start building private armies in Nigeria, a country where the citizens are restless, what you are going to end up having at the end of the day, I cannot even, I cannot contemplate talking about it on radio. But trust me, if in, if in, in, in the Niger Delta now, you now have some people that are licensed to carry firearms of all sorts, RPGs and whatever it is. If you are alive during the Civil War, you will get a sense of what, of what I'm talking about. I Nigeria is too fragile for this thing. Don't come and tell me about one. Black water <laughs> or blue water. Good evening, let's move on, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one says is, is in Daily Trust. Six point yes. eight million naira, um, Hajj fair, intending uh, pilgrims demand refund. Look, Hajj is personal. Okay, even Allah says that you can go. You should go on Hajj if there's a proviso there. If you can afford it, I think the government should hands off Hajj. It's a private for as long as the government. All this having Jerusalem, Nigeria, I think, is the only country where you have something called Jerusalem Pilgrim. As a title. As a title. Mm -hmm. Let's stop all these things. Al Hajj means pilgrim. Al Hajj, that's pilgrim. A group of people going, who are they pilgrim? We turned it around in Africa and became Elijah and Elijah. Fair enough. But it is extremely private. And luckily, as God would have it now, there are so many private arrangements by which people go to Mecca. So now is the time that, that the government should hands off all kinds. It's a private initiative. Because if you if, ideally, if you are going to be running hard, and then the Christians also demanded their own whatever it is, their pilgrims board. Okay, what about those who belong to the Baha'i faith <laughs> and belong? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They also need their own pig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and these things, the, the, this whole thing is, is just an opportunity. Of course, you and I know what, what all this means. I don't mm. want to offend anybody, not during this period. But practically, we should hands up because the truth is that it is no longer even what it used to be in terms of funding. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and so somebody here was asking for a special rate for them. You are not asking for a special rate for medicines. You're not asking for a special rate for education. You're asking for, for special rate for money to be sold for people who are going on individual uh, uh, whatever, mm. who have also been told that it is only for those who can afford it. Uncle Jimmy, let's look at the, the news uh, and bits before we go. L let me jump this news and quickly run to the health page because I don't know if we will have much time. Because the health page... Mm. Sheriff and I have promised we'll bring it every um, whatever. Months after Pond's health rights report, Ogun community still denied access to clean water. Okay. Uh, let me see. Now listen to this. Health warning. Excess protein may endanger heart, kidney, and others. Okay. This is uh, a cardiologist has warned 
that excess protein that is beans and so on and so forth. Sorry. Time. Oh, okay. Then we will go, we will go now. And then another quick one. Artificial sweeteners fuel diabetes and damage kidney, says expert. So, oh. you know, we need to be more careful. Let's be more careful. Uncle yes. Jimmy, we're coming up at nine. Uh, you'll be talking about, uh, you mentioned it earlier. The, what's the name of the governor now? Governor okay, Alex Oti. Oti. That's going to be an I interesting want to know, one. We want to know if he's for real or not. All right, all right. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, you can Thank join you. Daily Digest at 9. Um, up next, uh, the news at 8. Stay with us. It's 8 o'clock. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens.